All right. So once again, thank you guys so much for being a part of Food as Medicine. This workshop is going to be beneficial for everyone on the call and everybody listening later. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of information. So I highly recommend go grab a pen, go grab a pencil, grab a notebook. You're going to want to take notes. And then also I will send you all this information after. And if you have questions, write down the questions as we go, or you have a little chat box um, at the bottom that you can type questions in. So um, my name is Allie. Alicia Long, and I am in a four-year program to become a naturopathic doctor. After year two, when I graduate in January, I will be a natural health therapist. And a part of that journey for me is sharing with you to empower you to take control of your health. And so that's why this conversation is really, really important, food as medicine. Food is something we all have to eat right? We can't go without food and water. It's something that we all have to consume and put in our bodies. And so it's essential that we're making the right choices for ourselves. So the first question I want to ask you guys is, if you don't mind saying your name, and you don't all have to come off mute if, if it doesn't work for you or you're not comfortable with it, but if anybody wants to jump in, tell us your name, just introduce yourself, and tell us what your definition of real food is. And at the very end, I'm going to tell you the definition that I found of real food. But for my brave souls on today, come off mute and let me know your name and how you define real food. Okay, I can go. I'm Mary Mike, and I would define real food as something either made from scratch or just made with good ingredients, maybe probably not something from a restaurant. Love it. Absolutely. Both great answers. Thank you, Mary Mike. Appreciate that. Z? I would say real food is food that's either grown from earth, um, that's not man-made, mm -hmm. and or is like from an animal product, like a real animal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because you awesome. have to do that nowadays, real animals, real meat. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. All these answers. Beautiful. Keep them coming. Um, Julie is on with us and she says grown or animal could make at home with uh, home ingredients. You guys are on the right track. Beautiful. I love it. So I wanted to ask that icebreaker um, and tell you the definition that I found is not industrially processed not had the natural qualities interfered with or quality of composition reduced, free of chemicals, free of additives, and rich in nutrients. What is real food? Not industrially processed, not had the natural qualities interfered with or quality of composition reduced, free of chemicals and additives, and rich in nutrients. And I loved that because I think if we asked ourselves every meal or every snack, is this real food? Did it come from the earth? Has it been industrially processed? Has it had its natural qualities interfered with? Is it free of chemicals and additives? Is it rich in nutrients? This tomato is looking pretty good on that checklist. But it is possible it's been sprayed with something, so we might not be able to check that free of chemicals. We would have to check to see if it was, um, you know, pesticide free. And Julie had a question. Um, oh, not industrially processed. Yeah, see? Was that a question? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. Okay. So I was writing it out so everybody can have it. And I accidentally hit send. So you said not industrially processed, rich in nutrients, free of chemicals. What else am I missing? Um, not had the natural qualities interfered with. Okay. Or quality of composition reduced. That one more time. That last one. Yeah. Has not had the quality of composition reduced. And I can always send it later too, sister. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, so second part of the game, second part of the icebreaker, um, not real food. So I'm gonna turn in my book here. We're gonna play a little game just quickly. 
not real food. Let's look at some fast food in my book here. All right, so we're not even gonna talk about the chemical nightmare that's in this food, but does anybody wanna guess um, how many calories are in McDonald's big breakfast with hotcakes? Do, 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 do. <laughs> how many calories are in McDonald's hotcake breakfast? Okay, 1,500 is a guess. 1250. I like it. I like it. You guys are close. All right. Amount of calories in the big breakfast with hot cakes is 1090. And that's just according to my sources. So that is like, if you eat 2000 calories in a day, you're already halfway there. And we're not even breaking down the GMOs, the pesticides, the sugar, the glucose, the corn syrup, all the things that might be in that. All right, let's throw out another one. Um, how about the Applebee's appetizer sampler? So you go to Applebee's with your friends and you order the appetizer sampler. I don't know what's on it. Probably mozzarella cheese sticks and chicken wings. And let's just guess, throw out a number. You can type it in the chat or you can come off mute. I love it. The numbers are coming in. 3,080, 1,900. Man, you guys are good. You guys are good. Mary Mike is still thinking hard. Oh, she put it in there. Like, okay, I got you. 1,600. Okay, the appetizer sampler at Applebee's is about 2,300 calories. So 2,300 calories. Um, and I mean, you share it, maybe, maybe you don't, maybe you eat the whole thing. Um, I do want to reiterate that the purpose of this chat, the purpose of food as medicine is in way, no way, shape or form um, to food shame. And it's in no way, shape or form to say this food is bad and this food is good. It's really to heighten our awareness of what's in the food we're eating. So I do just want to reiterate that. Okay, so... Um, I do have a fun little list here of all the calories and some fast food. Um, I have a couple pages of that. So if anybody would like to see, um, and then the next page that I turn to is the difference between fast food and whole food. So just as an example, um, if you eat a cup of cabbage, not only is it loaded with nutrients, but it's one full cup is 41 calories. So that gives you like nutrient dense, um, comparison, um, a half a cup of black beans, 114 calories. And then you've got all that good fiber. Um, a third of a cup of coconut, really healthy fat, right? Like the good fat from coconut, 94 calories. Um, let's look at an avocado. An avocado, a whole avocado is 250 calories. And you're getting all of the nutrients and the healthy fats from that as well. The vitamins, the minerals. Um, so you know, if we look at a side by side of the Applebee's or McDonald's example versus a plate of lentils and black beans and pineapple and cherries and all that yummy food that's actually going to fuel our body um, and ask ourselves that question that we asked in the beginning, is this real food? Was it industrially processed? Did it stray from, was it interfered with the natural um, qualities that it was meant to have? Okay. So a couple more things before we go into my pantry, my vulnerable Zoom here that you guys are all part of. Um, I think I reiterated there's no good foods or bad foods. Um, we just are going to look at food as a whole. Uh, will this meal nourish my body? Um, if the answer is no, ask yourself, why are you eating it? Um, if the answer is because it tastes good or if it's out of habit, maybe the next step is for you to learn what's in it and curiosity will empower you. So I'm going to read to you a list of invisible ingredients, okay? So we're going to get out our little magnifying glasses, okay? And we're going to pick up the food in our pantry, right? I just kind of had a random bag of chips here. We're going to pick up the food in our pantry, and we're going to look at it, and we're going to go, I don't know what the freak half of this means, because most of the processed food at the grocery store, it's 
especially on like the in inside shelves. I heard one time, and I think it's like a true fact that if you shop on the outer rim of the grocery store, it's the healthier stuff. And then the inside is where the more like processed stuff is. I don't know if that's true anymore. Um, but if your product has like a whole half, you know, the package is taken up by words that you can't understand, it's a pretty good indicator that they're invisible ingredients that you might not even know what they are. So processed foods have hidden ingredients, many of which are genetically modified, unless they're clearly labeled as certified organic or very specifically stated non-GMO, they can contain GM genetically modified ingredients. The following is a list of invisible ingredients. Now, I am not going to spend all the time it takes, but look at this. This is just one page. And I'll read some of them. Aspartame, Candorel, canola oil, cobalamin, condensed milk, corn masa, corn sugar, corn syrup, dextrose, erythritol, fructose, glutamic acid, glycerol, inositol, invert sugar, lecithin, malt extract, phenylalanine, triglycerides, whey powder, NutraSweet, caramel color, cysteine equal glucose high fructose corn syrup does this sound like real food no not at all dextrin so this is going to be the fun part we're going to go in my pantry and be like little detectives to see how many of these words we can find second page okay second page corn allergen list why are we allergic to corn why are we so allergic to all of these things that we're eating now. Well, I think a really big reason to that is because of how they're being processed, what they're being sprayed with, and what they're doing to manipulate what was never meant to be manipulated. So this corn allergen list, the body recognizes these allergens as something that's attacking the body and it releases a histamine, a histamine and other chemicals to help the body to combat what it's ingesting. And that's why we have that allergic response. Um, so a corn allergen list, and this is where it gets really tricky. Um, if you have a corn allergy, uh, you might not know to look for words like acetic acid, absorbic acid, blended oh. sugar, caramel color, uh, oh. corn oil, corn sweetener, corn syrup solids. Uh, FSL-20, ethyl maltol, gluconic acid, glutamate, high fructose corn syrup. Um, gosh, there's so many. Maltol, fructose. Like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but you can kind of get the gist that our food system is pretty darn broken, right? Yeah. Um, I, did you guys have a question? Did I see somebody raise their hand for a question? Okay. Perfect. Um, okay, so I wanted to read to you the invisible ingredients um, and then the corn allergen list. Oh my gosh, you guys, it just goes on and on. I can actually scan this in and send it to you if you want. So I wanna read this to you really quick. Um, Americans get sick more often than Europeans uh, or people from any other industrialized nation. And scientific evidence suggests a significant factor may be the genetic engineering of our food supply. Despite claims by government regulators and the food industry that our foods are safe, scientific studies continue to show the opposite. Our food has been linked with allergies, reproductive problems, infertility, birth defects, bizarre mutation, cancer, and now unidentified mystery organisms causing an epidemic of our livestock to have sudden death syndrome. Our foods trigger immune attacks because they appear to your body as foreign invaders rather than food. This immune response can lead to chronic inflammation, which in turn raises your risk for multiple additional health problems. Since the mid 1990s, the number of Americans suffering from at least three chronic illnesses nearly doubled. Life expectancy has decreased and infant mortality has increased. Illnesses once rare are now common with some approaching epidemic levels. For example, and again, you can write this down or I'll send it to you. Autism now affects 
one in 88 children compared to one in 25,000 in 1970. Type 2 diabetes rates in the U.S. increased by 176% between 1980, the year I was born, and 2010. Celiac disease is four times more common than 60 years ago. And Alzheimer's disease is rising at alarming rates. It's estimated that 5.4 million Americans, that's one in eight, now have Alzheimer's. And nearly half of those age 85 and older have it. AD rates have doubled since 1980, Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so one more reading. Hippocrates' philosophies are truth, then and certainly today. Because of modern technology, we're able to take each plant, food, and herb apart to the minutest chemical component, bringing a level of awareness that allows us to look at the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the contraindications, and the benefits, coupled with the anatomy and physiology of the human body to bring such a level of information and education to us. We are at such a transcendent time in history, you guys. There is a level of awakening unparalleled like no other time. We have the knowledge and we have the education. We have the wherewithal to accomplish unprecedented change in our health and wellness by incorporating the tools we have available to us. So that is the hope. We do have a great understanding of how each vitamin, mineral, trace mineral, tissue, salt, amino acid, protein, carbohydrate, fat, blood tape, glycemic index, caloric intake, food combination is capable of healing the body. We also have a great understanding of what disease may result if we are deficient, if we overindulge, or if we are out of balance. Isn't that great? I love that writing. Um, and I think it brings us the hope because with every chemical nightmare of food that is at our fingertips and at the fingertips of our children, there is hope when we empower and we create awareness in our own families. Okay. So before we go into my pantry, we are going to read one more thing, and then we're going to go in and we're going to take a look. So this will be fun. Um, and if you guys want to do any sort of follow up where, you know, you send me products in your pantry and we like look at them together or whatever, um, I'm all about it. So, all right, we just talked about the hope. Let's back up for a minute. Um, a vast majority of processed foods contain that contain corn soy or canola or any derivative thereof are made from genetically modified Roundup Ready crops, which have never been proven safe for human consumption. The fact that we live in one of the wealthiest countries in the world and there are products on every grocery store shelf that have been sprayed with Roundup truly blows my mind, truly. Uh, Roundup causes birth defects, deformities in frogs and chicken embryos, and according to a study published last year, this report shows that industry and regulators are aware. They are aware of these effects as early as the 1980s, and they have kept the information hidden from the public. Because why? Okay, we know why. Regulations are primarily based on unpublished industry studies showing glyphosate, glyphosate. I always say it different than other people. Glyphosate, glyphosate. We, we all say it different. The active ingredient Monsanto's herbicide Roundup is safe. Numerous animal studies suggest reproductive problems are a common side effect of glyphosate exposure and consumption of genetically engineered Roundup ready crops. Okay, so the reason that I wanted to read that to you and why that's important is because a lot of the stuff we're going to look at, um, if it doesn't say organic, then more than likely it has been sprayed with a pesticide or had some sort of Roundup um, sprayed on it. So it's a little tricky because I've heard so many people say, then why do they make organic so expensive? I can't afford organic. And I guess I don't really have an easy answer to that, but 
I have, I'm, I'm happy to see that more places are carrying organic, um, you know, specifically in America, um, we can go to the Whole Foods and the Trader Joe's and the Plum Markets and all these higher end grocery stores if we have the luxury of being able to afford it. But what if you can't? And I actually did a presentation a while ago about where to find affordable organic food like Walmart does carry organic food. Um, so I think we just have to make a decision for ourselves, too, about where we shift our money. Um, because I know for me and my family, we shifted our money to make organic food and nutrient dense food a priority. And maybe that means shifting the money that we spend on other things to what we're fueling our bodies with, right? I know it's not an easy answer, um, but eating organic is truly the only way to not eat to not eat pesticides, <laughs> to not ingest them. Um, so we're going to go into my pantry and we're going to take a look at some things so you guys can come with me. And I want to thank my my beautiful mother-in-law right here. Colette can wave to us. <laughs> she's helping me on dog duty because the dogs want to bark and be a part of the presentation. So she's actually listening as well. Um, and she has a vast background in um, dietetics and nutrition. So she's probably like jumping out of her seat wanting to share with us, right? Okay, so here we are in my pantry. Hi, Callie. I'm going to shut the door for a sec. This is so weird that I'm zooming from my pantry. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. This is so fun. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to start with, let's just grab something random. All right. So we've got salsa, right? Like the world of salsa is so, like when you go to the grocery store, there are so many salsas. All right. So this one says, it doesn't say organic. It just says, here it, is, here it is, salsa. Okay, right? So tomatoes, tomato juice, citric acid, calcium chloride, onions, green chili peppers, calcium chloride for firming, and citric acid to acidify. Okay, so in a perfect world, salsa should be tomatoes grown in your own garden, onions grown in your own garden, and some organic vinegar, right? So this isn't horrible, but there are some words in there that are like, mm, I don't really want to eat calcium chloride for firming or citric acid to acidify. I mean, I know citric acid is a naturally occurring thing, but what did they do to the citric acid? Are the tomatoes organic? Mm -mm. So could the tomatoes have been at a farm that were sprayed with pesticides and now I'm ingesting pesticides? Potentially, right? So that might not be the best choice, but there it is. Um, okay, so, oh, this. Yes. All right, cream of celery. Why do I even have this in here? Uh, water, celery, vegetable oil. So it's corn canola and soybean oil, super duper duper inflammatory to the body. Uh, wheat flour that's been like processed to no end, I'm sure, and sprayed with glyphosate. Oh, monosodium glutamate. You know what that is? MSG, very highly inflammatory, not good for the body. And people that have a, a allergic reaction to MSG might not know to look for the word monosodium glutamate. Um, natural flavoring. Did you know that natural flavoring in our country, the FDA allows natural flavoring is this two words that can be hundreds of different ingredients. So when it says natural flavoring, we don't even know what that means. It could be pineapple juice. That's a natural flavoring, or it could be some long obscure word that I have no idea how to pronounce. So not the best choice. Um, okay. 
this right here. My son loves uh, ramen noodles, okay? I should not even allow <laughs> this in my house. <laughs> so look at this. Can you see that? That is not real food, my friends, okay? So it says contains a bioengineered food ingredient. Can you see that at the bottom? Contains a bioengineered food ingredient. Doesn't sound good. We don't want bioengineered food ingredients. Look at your food in your pantry. And if it says that, it's time to throw it out. Okay. Um, I thought I was reaching for my Cheerios. I had some Cheerios in here and Cheerios say that. Um, I think they were honey nut Cheerios, but so this has enriched wheat flour. That word enriched wheat flour means what? It's been enriched. Things have been added to it. Um, vegetable oil, canola oil, um, maltodextrin, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, hydrolyzed soy protein, chicken fat. Wonder where that chicken came from. Um, Nothing is organic in here, and it's disodium guanolate, disodium insalinate, which actually we talked about that in inosinate um, as being a invisible word. Monosodium phosphate. I believe that's another word for MSG, not 100% positive. Silicone dioxide is an anti-caking agent. So our kids take this to lunch. Is this nourishing their body? No. Okay. So I, I started with kind of like some bad stuff, right? So we have Annie's Mac and Cheese, and Annie's is typically known as a better brand, right? Annie's prides themselves on where they source their wheat from. They pride themselves on more natural ingredients. I only buy the organic Annie's, or um, sometimes we do the gluten-free Annie's. Um, my son loves this, and on the side, it says... You can see, you probably can't see it very well, but it says organic pasta, organic whey, organic cultured cream, organic non-fat milk, organic butter, organic dried cheddar cheese. Um, so everything is organic, which tells us that it hasn't been sprayed with the the, um, the glyphosates. Um, it even says right on here, organic is always non-GMO. Organic is always non-GMO. Okay, USADA, this is what you want to look for, USADA organic. And like with Annie's, if you're on a budget, um, obviously it's better to eat tomatoes you grow in your garden and carrots you grow in your garden um, and not stuff from a box. But if you had to pick, which would you pick, right? So like that's kind of the point. Um, okay, so I have from... Costco, a big thing of organic pasta. Okay. Um, if you have celiac disease or you can't eat gluten, you wouldn't want to eat this because it is made with organic wheat, but it is going to be a better option than a lot of people that are gluten intolerant or have celiac. It's because what they're spraying on our, our wheat um, fields is wrecking the gut. Okay. So that's one reason. Now you could have celiac disease for a myriad of other reasons. Um, but I just want you to know that So this organic pasta from Costco on the back, and this is what you always want to look for is, does it have like less than three ingredients? Okay. One ingredient, beautiful. Two ingredients, beautiful. Three ingredients, awesome. So organic wheat, organic tomato powder and organic spinach powder. That's it. So this is a pretty good choice, right? Um, let's look at, let's find, let's do one more really good one. Um, actually two more really good ones. Okay, einkorn all-purpose flour. So when I make my own sourdough bread, um, which is rare, very rare. I wish it was more often, but we use einkorn and einkorn. You guys look up jovial. If you are not familiar with jovial, they are top of the line, also pricey, um, but it's wheat as nature intended. This is how wheat should be. 
It's all purpose flour. The only wheat never hybridized, low gluten index, unbleached, unbrominated, meaning they're not taking all the nutrition out of it. They're keeping it in here and they're keeping wheat as it should be. Question? Where do you get that from? Um, Whole Foods, uh, Plum Market, I think has it. Um, I think you can order it online too. You could go to the Jovial website. Okay. Um, jovialfoods.com. Thank you. Yep. And my husband actually made, um, he made eggplant Parmesan for dinner. Um, it's so cool. He cooks now. And so my stepmom went to the farmer's market and got some local, um, eggplant. And then he used this and some breadcrumbs, which I don't know where they are, but he used some breadcrumbs and um, non-inflammatory oil. So like olive oil or avocado oil. And he made um, some really delicious um, eggplant parm and he used um, goat cheese, uh, like raw goat cheese on top. So it was really, 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 really yummy. Um, will my kids eat it? No, <laughs> but you can only try so much. Um, okay. So I have a goal for myself to eat more protein because I am perimenopausal. I'm in my 40s. Um, my muscle is not folding as well. Um, and so I'm learning about my body as we age. And this is a really important point to bring up um, that we need to lift more weight. So we need to eat more protein as we get older. And so I am consciously trying to figure out creative ways to get more protein. So I have been incorporating um, chia seeds and hemp seeds into my diet quite a bit. Now, notice they're organic, okay? Organic chia and organic hemp. Organic hemp seeds um, have 10 grams of protein and two carbs and 16 grams of healthy fat. And they have one ingredient, one ingredient, organic shelled hemp, okay? So awesome. Organic chia seeds, same thing. One ingredient, organic chia seeds. Okay. Now I make those hold one sec. These are in my fridge. And Z is Z and M has actually had my chia pudding before. Um, so I use coconut milk, organic coconut milk, which we'll go over in a second. Organic coconut milk, chia seeds, hemp hearts, and protein powder. So I get like healthy fat, healthy protein you know, or organic sources. And then I also use almond milk. Now, ideally you want to make your own almond milk because almonds are a heavily processed, genetically modified crop, unless you get them organic. Um, so I know some people are going to say, Allie, that's not the best protein. I know. Um, but I'm not here to be perfect. Okay. So organ organic protein, we get at Costco and it's affordable for my family. My boys love it. They'll eat it in smoothies. And it's not, you know, the total crap of some of the other kinds. Um, so it's organic protein blend and it's made with pea protein um, because I don't eat dairy. Um, and it's got 50 superfoods that are all organic. So that's super awesome. It's got probiotics in it. Um, and 21 grams of protein. So that's the organ. My higher end blend that um, I kind of switch off and on. I love, 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 love Nature Sunshine Power Meal. Uh, it's superfoods and you can get this on their website. I actually have an account that you can go under me and get a discount. Superfoods, um, 25 grams of plant protein and organic. So let's look at this really quick. Um, Premium superfood protein blend, chlorella, spirulina, um, organic mushrooms. That's good. Superfood fruit and green. Um, you know, it's interesting. It says organic broccoli, 
but then it just says carrots and spinach. Organic kale, organic orange peel. So it makes me wonder, are the carrots and spinach organic? But I mean, you know, we, we can get as nitpicky as we want, or we can be like, okay, this is a better choice for my body, right? Again, going back to the basic principle of um, the least processed, the, be the better. I think I missed a question. Let me go to the chat. Um, I agree. None of those soups. Amen, sister. Um, the fact that they're in my pantry, um, I actually didn't want to take anything out of my pantry on, pur on purpose because I wanted to be real with you guys. I just want like, this is, this is life. This is a mom. This is, you know, fast moving other people, grocery shopping and, and things like that too. So, um, and products that I've used. Did you have a question Z? No, I just had a comment actually. Yeah. Um, sometimes like, you know, it's important to do the best we can, but then always remember the power of prayer. Like we just pray over, you know, the food and then hopefully that changes the chem you know, the chemical structure. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So the point is not to like let one or two ingredients really mess you up because you know, you can't control it all the time. Well, and the point I'm going to make later when we go back to the table is um, trace amounts. So there's a documentary called Trace Amounts, and it's about vaccinations and mercury, but which you know, Zainab, but trace amounts of the foods that we eat also add up. So when we talk about um, aluminum deodorant every morning, then we wake up and we eat a donut. And then for lunch, we have a hamburger. And then for snack, we have Cheez-Its. And then for dinner, do you see what I'm saying? It's these small amounts of everything that add up all day. So if you are 80 to 90% of your diet is focused on these healthy fats, these organic coconut oils, these organic chia seeds, a really healthy nourishing shake and maybe some skinny pop, which isn't perfect because it's got some inflammatory oils in it. Um, and then later with your husband, you have some chips and salsa and a little glass of red wine. We're not going to beat ourselves up about it, right? Because we are doing the best we can and we can pray over our food and we can pray over our meals, but we can't, we also can't make excuses and we have to start making better choices for ourselves because food is medicine. And that's the point of this whole chat. You know, um, there's a lot of things we can tweak, just little small tweaks. You know, I'm looking up here on my shelf. This is really fun. Um, we did this last winter. We haven't done it since, but we grew our own microgreens. So, you know, you see microgreens in the store. They're so easy, you guys. They're these little seeds and you put them in a mason jar with a lid and you just rotate them every day and they're just packed with nutrients. And they're also fun for kids to do. So I see this up here on my shelf and that's kind of like a, a fun little experiment. Um, the other thing I see up here on my shelf is a uh, fire cider. If you guys follow me on social media, you probably just saw me post about this. Um, so this is um, organic apple cider vinegar, and it has um, the root of horseradish and, um, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff in here. Onions, garlic, um, cilantro, basil, oranges, apples. Um, I can get you the whole list, but you let this sit for like four to six weeks, and then you strain it, and this is your medicine for the winter. This will knock out any cold. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever made this, but I can get you the recipe. Has anyone ever made fire cider? Yeah. Um, here, I'll be brave and show you guys if I can get it open. I might not be able to get it open. Yeah. It might be sealed too tight. I was going to take a sip. It is, it's shocking at first, but you can add honey to it. Local honey is best. Um, Okay, let's see, what else do I have in here um, that I wanted to show you guys? Um, organic applesauce. So homemade is better because it's not in a plastic package, um, but better of two evils, right? Um, let's see. Um, Kirkland trail mix. My kids eat this on the run. And this is going to be no bueno. 
<laughs> um, peanuts. They're not organic. And peanuts are another one of those things that are highly genetically are highly um, sprayed with uh, with pesticides. Peanuts and corn and almonds and soy and cotton and beets. Those are like the top ones that you really want to be mindful of. Um, 100% my kids should not be eating this. And it's got M&Ms in it, which M&Ms have really bad dyes. So red number 40, yellow number five, all the things that I preach not to eat. And this is in my pantry. So we're going to have to do a little revamp. Um, dextrin, corn syrup. This is garbage. Pure garbage. Sorry, Kirkland. You need to up your game. Um, what else? What do you guys want to see? Shout something out that you see. What should we look at? Anything? The canned goods. The canned peas, I think those are. All right. I think these have been in here a really long time. Okay, so one thing about canned food. If you think about the frequency of food and how a tomato grows in rich soil and has sunlight and is nourished and it's watered and it grows and it's abundant, and then you cut into it and it's just juicy and luscious and delicious in your mouth. What do you think the frequency of that food is? super high, right? What do you think happens when you pick a sweet pea and you shove it in a can that's made of aluminum and then it sits on a shelf? If we are what we eat, should we be eating peas this way? No. Now, again, going back to if you don't have the resources and this is the only vegetable you can eat, then we make the best of it and we pray over it and we hopefully find nutrients and nutrition um, along the way. So peas in a can, the, what's it say? Peas, water, sugar, and salt. Peas, they're not organic. They might've been sprayed. Water, is it unfiltered water? If it's unfiltered water, is it loaded with heavy metals? Potentially. Sugar, why do we need to have sugar added? Because people like things sweet and they're sweet peas, but peas don't need sugar. And then salt. So salt is in most canned goods, right? Because why? Preserve, right? To preserve it. Um, and anybody you hear that you know, has a heart issue or high blood pressure. And you know, we live in a world where we're put on high blood pressure medication and you're told you can't eat salt. Well, salt is not the enemy. It's the kind of salt you're eating, okay? So this is not doctor advice. I'm not a doctor, but the kind of salt you're eating does matter because there's organic salt and inorganic salt, and our body can only assimilate a certain kind of salt. And so that's why um, two years ago, our family switched to Redmond Sea Salt, and it's directly from the salt mines in Utah, okay? So Himalayan sea salt is even better. So salt is not the enemy. I just want to bring up that point. Um, we have electrolytes in here because my kids play sports. And this is actually by Redmond. It's called Relight Hydration. And it's made with actual Redmond sea salt. The only thing I don't like about it is that it says GMO-free citric acid. Great. Natural lemon flavor. Okay, it's telling me what the natural flavor is. Stevia. Stevia is a plant. Beautiful. Natural strawberry flavor. And ancient sea salt. Okay, I guess that's not so bad. Oh, it says natural flavors, but it lists them. So that's something to look for. So if you're looking for an electrolyte, this is a good one. And let's do a comparison. What about LMNT? Has anyone ever taken LMNT? Okay, so um, if you're drinking a lot of water, as you should be, because water is super beneficial for you, um, if you're drinking 100 ounces of water a day, you're flushing out the minerals, right? So we want to drink that much water, but we need to remineralize. That's important. Food is medicine. We want to replace those minerals. Um, LMNT is a very, very popular electrolyte with sodium, potassium, and magnesium, Um but it's got salt. 
I don't know where the source is. We could probably look on the website. Citric acid, it doesn't say organic citric acid, but that's there. Potassium chloride. Okay, so there's a thing with potassium chloride that some people have a condition where they can't have an excess of potassium. So that's another thing you wanna look out for. Natural flavors, I don't know where these are from. And then stevia is a good one. So it's not horrible at all, um, but you wanna start to question and ask these questions about where things came from. Okay, so that's kind of a fun comparison of electrolytes since we're in my pantry. Um, another fun comparison would be greens. Organic super greens. Um, if you look on the back, it's a lot of words, but the words are organic spinach, organic blueberries, organic moringa, organic parsley, organic ashwagandha. So it's a lot of words, but read the fine print. And I know it's exhausting, you guys. I know it's exhausting. So that's why even just, if you even just take one takeaway tonight, um, certified organic for kids, I put this in my kids' smoothies um, to just help supplement. And I actually love this one. Um, this one is by Peak Performance. And it, they're very transparent about, I know it's hard to see, um, digestive blend, immunity blend, antioxidant blend, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. So what else? Let's look at a, let's look at another bad one. Oh, not bad. We're not saying bad. Another non-nutrient preservative filled um, something in my pantry. Let's see. Oh, another mama trick. I try to put the crap up top and I always throw away their Halloween candy. <laughs> I put it in a box and I donate it or I throw it away because I'm like, sugar is, you know, it's cause of sickness. It's uh, inflammation and the more sugar that we eat, you know, uh, cancer and disease breeds on sugar. So just, sorry, that's that not, not so fun fact. Um, okay. Up here, let's look. Okay. We've got, okay. Let's do a fun little game. What do you think would be better? Skinny dipped dark chocolate salted caramel cashews or Cherry Republic dried cherries. What do you think would be a better snack option? Dried cherries. Dried cherries? Okay, anyone else? See. Cherries, Mary Mike says cherries. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Okay, Balaton cherries, cane sugar, and sunflower oil. So sunflower oil, inflammatory, Balaton cherries, um, originally discovered in Hungary and grown in Northern Michigan, these extraordinary, slightly earthy, plump tart cherries. So I could go to the website and see if they actually show the source of where these are grown. And these might not be such a bad option. They are, they do have a lot of sugar, but it's a fruit. So, okay. Now. Skinny dipped almonds. Skinny dipped cashews. I'm sorry. Um, cashews, not organic. Dark chocolate. Um, sunflower lecithin, white chocolate, caramel powder, glucose syrup, maple sugar, sea salt, natural flavor. Not a good choice. And actually, skinny dipped. Um, some of their other products, like I've looked at some of their other products and it's like just almonds and dark chocolate. So these ones have more ingredients than most. Um, but what should Skinny Dip to do to make their products um, non-GMO, non, non pesticide-free? What should they do? Organic. They should use organic almonds, organic cashews. Um, that word organic would be key, but organic is more expensive, right? So that's why a lot of companies opt not to do it. Um, those were a gift. Let's see. Oh, highly refined peanut oil. 
palm oil, again with the inflammation, um, sugar, flour, which has been heavily processed. So not the best choice. Um, okay. I think we're ready to leave my pantry. Any? Do you guys want to look at anything else in here? Any other final requests? All right, um, let's head back to the table. And we're gonna do one more thing to wrap up. And I'm so, so grateful for your time. This has been really fun. Um, I have a document. Uh, let's see here, put that at. Cause I promised you guys, we would also go over the color of foods. Um, I actually have a document that I'm working on for homework. Um, that I do some comparisons. So like um, I compare Simply Cheetos to regular Cheetos because when you see the word Simply Cheetos, doesn't it make you think it would be healthier? Right? So that's greenwashing. That's called greenwashing. So my document that I'm going to send you does a side-by-side -side comparison um, of uh, mac and cheese. I picked Cheetos um, Gatorade, which is terrible for you. Gatorade is not what it says it is. Gatorade is not a healthy choice when it comes to kids electrolytes or adult electrolytes. The the two products that we looked at were ac are actually better. Um, so I'll send you guys that document. Um, so that way we can just jump right into foods and their benefits by color. And then it's 7.30 right now. So I'm going to do my best to have us wrap up in the next 10 minutes. How's that sound? Good. You guys have 10 more minutes with me? Okay, perfect. Um, let me turn to that page and I'm going to send all this to you. So for those of you that are joining us uh, later and you're not listening live, um, if you don't get the follow-up documents, please email me. Um, the best email would probably be the easiest to remember, bornsunnysideup at gmail.com, bornsunnysideup at gmail.com and I can send you the follow-up. So, okay. The benefits of fruits and veggies by color. Okay, do I have anything green? I guess these grapes are green. I was gonna grab some lettuce, which I have some really yummy lettuce in my garden, but green foods are rich in cancer preventing antioxidants and iron. Iron affects many aspects of daily life, including the ability to concentrate and learn. So green is good for focus, stress, sense of well-being, strengthening our immune system, contains antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, chlorophyll, which is what gives it like that rich color. Um, green whole foods are a convenient and inexpensive way to add more nutrition from fresh raw fruits and veggies to your diet every day. Uh, they have phytochemicals and let's see, some green this would be like asparagus spinach, broccoli, avocados, green grapes, kiwi, and lime. So the color green, which is also your heart chakra. So there's another fun little fact. Green is your heart chakra. Now don't expect me to know all the, the colors of the chakras. I should, but um, red. Okay, we talked about this juicy, yummy tomato. Um, red foods are a great source of protein, vitamins, and minerals, such as vitamin C, beta carotene, lycopene, um, let's see, uh, iron is vital to the body's formation of red blood cells, which carry and store oxygen throughout the body. And red foods are, are high in iron. They can be, and that's especially important for men's health, um, for prostate cancer as well. Um, black beans are high in fiber and calcium, whereas red beans are a good source of iron. So we just talked about iron, um, calcium. Red foods can have heavy high in calcium for bones, strawberries, raspberries, cherries, tomatoes, watermelon, pink grapefruit. And then they're classifying beans in this category too, like black beans and red beans. Um, what do I want to tell you? Oh, um, PMS or women's um, reproductive issues, red foods, red raspberry tea, raspberries, think about, think about blood right? Doctrine of signatures, red and red. So any red food is good for that. Okay. Um, orange and yellow. I have an orange or a yellow here. Um, yellow food and orange food assist in detoxing and releasing toxins from the body. 
um, as in the chakra system, orange foods and orange foods, the energy help with the reproductive system, muscles and joint and flexibility, um, beta carotene, vitamin C. These foods help people maintain good vision, fortify the immune system, promote proper bone. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids have a yellow energy and um, you can include these foods in your diet, lemons, bananas, grapefruits, um, so on and so forth. So orange and yellow. Again, I'll send you all the benefits because I'm just kind of breezing through. Uh, purple and blue. Um, I don't have any blueberries in front of me, but I love blueberries. And then the purple that I was going to show you guys was the eggplant um, that my husband made into dinner. So do you guys want to see it? I want to see how delicious it looks. I'll show you. The doggies are snoozing now. You guys can see the doggies. <laughs> They're passed out. Okay. So here's the eggplant. Or oven. Go. He did a good job, didn't he? That looks good. Can we get the recipe? Super yummy. I'll ask him. I'll ask him to share the recipe. Okay, so for dinner, I had a purple food, okay, from the farmer's market. Um, so what benefits are of purple food? The pigment found in blue and purple foods are high in anti-cancer properties. As in the chakra system, these foods coordinate with the same energy centers. Blue foods tend to be helpful for the voice, organs and glands of the neck, while indigo and violet foods work in conjunction with the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. They also contain water-soluble vitamins that strengthen tiny blood vessels and support swollen ankles. So that'd be good for edema. Um, and you can see too, like when we talk about food as medicine, are we saying any of those things about this? No, right? So if we just flip the script a little bit and look at, I should eat this, because it's strengthening my bones and it's giving me vitality and it's, you know, all the things that are going to make me feel good instead of, I can't have this, right? Like if we kind of flip it a little bit, we actually would start to want this more because we know how good it is for our eyes and the longevity of our life. And it's just hard, you know, it's hard sometimes because we live in a world that that's not, not the norm. Um, violet foods. Purple sprouting broccoli, eggplant, purple basil have uh, vitamin E. Oh, and St. John's wort. It's mentioning St. John's wort. Um, I love St. John's wort, which grows naturally. Um, you can find it out in the wild, and it's really good for anxiety. Okay, uh, purple and blue. And white food. There is a little listing on white food, boosts immunity, anti-cancer, ooh, onions and garlic, my favorite. That is my go-to girls and guys listening. Um, if you feel a little cold coming on, that fire cider is awesome, but cut up a clove of garlic. And if you can just, if you are okay with just swallowing it, swallow the clove of garlic. And I kid you not, like the next day, your symptoms will be dissipated. Um, you can also slice onions and put them on your feet. It's called a poultice. Um, do you guys follow that woman on social media? Um, Dr. Barbara, is that her name? You know what I'm talking about? She's got all the natural remedies. Barbara O'Neill from Australia. Thank you, Barbara O'Neill. Um, if you don't know Barbara O'Neill, look her up. And you can specifically type in Barbara O'Neill uh, poultice. And a poultice is um, something that like you'd slice the onion and put it on your feet with socks to draw out the cold out of your body. But you can also do like a ginger poultice. We did that in class um, for inflammation. And you can just literally take organic ginger, um, uh, shred it up and put it on like a swollen knee. But um, she's amazing and she will be a great resource and ally to you. Um, so white foods are really good with cholesterol, low blood pressure, um, and, and inflammation, um, which we know garlic and onions are good for all those things. So 
the benefits of fruits and veggies, um, this next page just kind of breaks down specific fruits and veggies. So it goes through tomatoes, bell peppers, beets. Is there a, a vegetable or a fruit you guys want me? Pick one and I'll, I'll read the benefits. Anybody want to throw one out there? Bell pepper. Bell pepper. Is that your fave? Yeah, at least yeah. right now. I love bell peppers. Do you have a garden that you grow? No, I live in an apartment building. Okay. Well, you could do it on your porch. You could have a little pot. Yeah. I don't have a porch, though. Okay. Well, next time I see you, I'm going to bring you bell peppers. Oh. <laughs> okay. So red bell peppers. They have vitamin A, C, and K, and car carotenoids. Carotenoids. Um, they're a powerful antioxidant, antioxidant, which can help prevent cancer and other diseases. Good job, bell peppers. One more. Anybody want to throw one out? How about pomegranates? I love little pomegranates. Let's do pomegranates. Rich in potassium and antioxidants, as well as folic acid. Helps maintain effective and healthy blood circulation. Health benefits also include stomach disorders, cancer, dental care, osteoarthritis, anemia, and diabetes. Okay. So we can eat foods by colors for different benefits of the body, which is pretty cool. Um, we can eat foods. Doctrines of Signature shows us that certain foods look like different body parts. So I already cut this carrot, but as a circle, it looks like the eyes, right? So it's good for the eyes. If I were to cut this tomato open, it looks like a heart. It's good for the heart. Um, so that's kind of fun. All these different foods that actually match up with organs and body parts. Um, all right, so um, I want to honor our time. Um, what questions do you guys have? Nothing? Okay. Um, the handout that I'm going to send to you guys uh, where I compare like the mac and cheese, it actually does a better job of breaking down those invisible ingredients that we talked about. So like if you pick up a Gatorade or you pick up, a bag of chips and you're like it says maltodextrin I don't remember Allie told me I shouldn't eat that but what does it mean uh you pick up a a drink and it says aspartame I think we all kind of know why you know we see the word aspartame and we know it's not good for us but why is it not good for us and that's where we can kind of dig in a little bit deeper um coming full circle back to that trace amounts that I mentioned um if 80, 90% of the time we are making those healthy choices and then the smaller percent of the time, you know, we are having those things that are maybe not so good for us. Um, starting to be mindful of everything you put in and on your body. So tampons that are toxic, nail polish that's toxic, lotion that goes into your lymphatic system, toxic, you know, lotion we put on our babies, because that's what we're used to. We have to think about all of these things, what we put in our body, what we put on our body, the choices that we make, you guys, it all adds up. It all adds up. Um, and the less toxins we're allowing in, the healthier we can become. So um, I really appreciate you guys being here. And please reach out if you have any questions later. Um, my next wellness workshop will be in person. And we are actually going to be making herbal medicines um, and tinctures. And that's going to be local here in commerce. Um, I will be leading a lot more virtual opportunities like this. So just make sure you're following me on social media at Sunny Side of Wellness. And um, you'll be able to see those opportunities. And if there's any way I can help you too, um, you can book a natural health consult with me and we can just sit down for 90 minutes and take a look at where you're at in your health and maybe how you can get to that healthier version of you and what changes we could make together. So, cause we all have different things we're dealing with. I have one question. Yeah. Real quick. Um, the natural flavoring is there a way we can find out what's what's in that natural flavoring of whatever specific product? Like, for example, if I had this in front of me, like with the company, do you know if the companies will tell you what's in it? 
Yeah, I, I love that question, Z. And I think you could email, you could do an experiment for us and, and circle back, email them and see if they'll tell you or go to their website and see. Um, okay. Like I really liked that that electrolyte said natural flavoring from lemons, natural flavoring from limes. Like you're really lucky if you see that. Um, the whole invisible ingredient thing too, if it's a caramel color, I can tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, caramel color is a natural flavoring that's made of chemicals. Um, in fact, let me read this to you really quick and then I'll let you guys go. Where did my, oh, you know why I can't find it? I took it in the pantry. Um, so the short answer is the look on their website, reach out, send an email. Um, I have a definition of on this handout, I'm going to give you guys, I have a definition of natural flavorings. Let me get this really quick. Um, all right, let's see. Corn syrup solids, organic circle. Um, I can't find it. I think the biggest thing I read was um, the F according to the FDA, um, natural flavorings can be up to a hundred different chemicals. So they're allowed to be derivatives of like up to a hundred different things. Um, and then that greenwashing where things look like they're healthy. Um, yeah. Short answer is email and see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, Zainab, when is your presentation on food as medicine? I actually um, am not taking that class until next year in the summer. Okay. It was, it was offered once, yeah. So I'm going to do it. We have that to look forward to. We can be your presentation next summer. Yeah. Z is in Yeah. What was that? I said Zainab is in school with me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for this, Allie.